What's going on people, welcome to 127 Works, and today we are having a look at the 1993, I believe it is, Renault Clio 16S um, Alien 1993, well that's the full title of the car, it's basically a mod that showed up on the Assetto Land kind of website thing, uh, link will be in the description if you want to check it out, but it's a cool little car, it kind of reminded me almost immediately of the old kind of 19, late 1990s, early 2000s kind of um, ricer kind of show car sort of things, but it's really at its heart it seems to be like a version of like the Renault Clio Sport sort of thing where it's like it's actually it's got some substance to it as opposed to just the style so it's going to basically be an in-depth look a couple of cl clips of the car an in-depth look at it in VR listen to the sound and we'll get in and have take it for a drive around the Nürburgring this time around and see how it goes so that's about it let's move over to the uh, in headset portion of the video So here we are inside the car. It is shockingly detailed. I don't know how else to put it. Like everything just looks really good. It absolutely passes the VR test. Like all the texture and the ambient occlusion, the details, the, like the, we've got the headset there or, or the, the head unit, all the controls and dials that you might need or want. Even in the back, like this tripped me out when I first noticed it when I was doing a bit of testing earlier on. Like they've modeled in the seat belts in the rear in like, ex exceptional detail like i don't know how else to put it like it honestly looks like like it really just looks fantastic like it looks like you're looking around an actual car from this era it's insane the way that they've captured it so good job to whoever the creator of this is again the link will be in the description it is just on the Assetto land website wix or whatever it's called i don't know if it's still on wix but either way so here's that old school kind of wheel just having a look around if we come out to the outside and have a look around and at the outside styling you can see that it's very much so of its time. It is very much so of that kind of late 90s, early 2000s, as I said, show car looking kind of thing. Like you can see the speakers in the background. And if you look on the side there, we've got Max Power stickers, which is just an amazing like thing. I never thought in a million years back when I was reading Max Power magazines in the early 2000s that I would have a VR headset on driving a car that would have featured in one of those magazines with a Max Power sticker on it. It's just not a thing that would have ever entered my head in a million years. So yeah, just really cool, absolutely fantastic looking. And let's check out, let's give a listen to the engine note. Sounds pretty cool, nice and low for the most part, nice and rumbly. Let's check it out from the outside. So it sounds good. Looks good. Now let's see if it drives good. So, again, I should explain it for the first few videos, at least in case anybody's watching and wondering why, in the name of God, I'm shifting gears in a late night, like early 90s gear stick car with the paddles. My gear stick, uh, or my gear input on my wheel is broken unfortunately so it's not even an option i'm sad to say so it has about 202 horsepower i think it's 219 foot uh, um is it foot pounds of torque that they measure in the south course in content manager at least and it only weighs like 980 odd pounds so it's not very heavy it doesn't have a load of horsepower but it certainly has a decent chunk for the size of the car controls pretty nicely thrown it in Oh, overshot that one a little bit. So the idea of this isn't to create like a super fast lap time. It's just to try and see how the car, how, how the car handles and, and pans out. Steering is very light. Oh, little touch of understeer, oversteer, a bit of every, every kind of steer. But it actually feels, like, oh, it's, it's actually really nice, I have to say. Oh, I've run it a little wide, let myself down there. So of course being front wheel drive, it's gonna have that feeling of it of, of the, you have to really push it out and make a mess in the corner to enable oversteer. Also, not a lot of torque steer. That's the thing. Maybe it's just the, the relative lack of power compared to some more modern front wheel drive cars that you get a lot of torque steer with. Probably shouldn't change gear there. Does it have a six gear? No, it does not. I'm actually pl very pleasantly surprised by how this thing feels so far. Again, maybe an unnecessary change. I just again first time on the car with the track so oh there's a bit of torque there there you go that's what I like it I should have should have waited a few more turns before giving that assessment I can never remember this section of the of the track properly so again torque there just taking out it's a little wide it's not bad at the very least, I'd say. It is there. Definitely not something like some of the newer focuses and civics and that kind of thing. 
that I've tried in this game. But this car feels surprisingly, surprisingly good. For a car of its age, and uh, I know it is obviously, obviously like a kind of a more leaning towards the Clio Sport kind of end of things than the base Clio model, but oh god, I'm bad. <laughs> I don't want to forget that this is a. Uh, I think Jimmy Broadbent described it in a video that I watched recently, L. Jimmer, as uh, in, out, in. Whoa, okay. <laughs> All right. I got distracted there with talking away. So I think this could be a good idea for the format. It's just basically when it comes to a street car or a race car or a track car or something like that, just a lap of the Norch life. Just get the highlights of a lap of the Norch life. Again, I'm, I'm coming up with this format and layout as, as I go along. It's not perfect. But I've been posting about it on Twitter about getting the um, the proper kind of flow and layout and all the bits and pieces that I need. Definitely didn't need to change down there. That was dumb. Probably do here though. This is tight if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like I do have. It's weird because it's on one hand the idea for the layout and format of this kind of episode of like or of this kind of video is super clear but also super complicated and annoying to try and work out exactly how to do it as weird as that sounds like it's super clear i know what i'm looking for it's almost like a like a top gear-esque type thing you can see there this, <laughs> these kind of like longer power sections are where it shows the fact that it's only got that 200 odd horsepower And steering does feel very light. It's strange. It's an interesting. Totally feel a lot heavier for some reason. This should be fun. We're not long off the carousel. <laughs> it's really down in second gear. So this is what I'm noticing as I'm as I'm going through. Two, second gear is where the torque steer is. By the time you're into third, it's not too bad at all. But let's see how we get on with the carousel. Ooh, we drift out a little too early. Again, in second with that torque steer that I mentioned. But again, just to, to touch on the appearance just one more time, the absolute beauty of the inside of this car cannot be underestimated. There's something about looking around it, it just, oh god, that's an, another section that I'm often forgetful of where it comes in the uh, layout of the track. There's a few of those ones where they're like basically like very sharp corners that I kind of mix up in my head. Like this section here, these two corners are fairly identical, like you think this is the infamous corner where everyone views it from, but it's actually not. It is around the bottom of the hill after this one, so it's actually this, like all those famous YouTube videos. This from this left-hander, the car usually comes around into this right-hander. Well, it's, the right-hander is usually where they come into view. <laughs> and it's funny that I go off in here, I'd absolutely be part of an episode. And this is usually where they pass the camera, just to the left there, before breaking, and into the left. Again, I'm not super up to date with the corner names, but I've spent a fair amount of time on this track over the years. In VR, obviously, in case that wasn't stunningly obvious. Um, this little section gets hard, hard enough on the brakes. Trying to keep it flat out, but also being aware of what the car is doing. Overall, I have to say, as we're getting fairly close to the end, didn't need to change gear there at all. Um, oof, that was bad. I have to say, I'm fairly impressed with this car. It's an absolute little beauty. I definitely recommend checking it out. Again, link will be in the description. Oh, I forgot that this is <laughs> as tight of a turn as it is. And we've basically got a 90 degree here. But the car is able to handle it. Like, the car is absolutely making up for my mistakes. My poor driving on this lap, again, being kind of a, a blind first drive of the car for the most part, other than, uh, other than a little test earlier on, once I actually downloaded just to make sure it all worked. It's, uh, yeah, it definitely, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it covers a bad driver's mistakes. Like, you're still going to go wide and not be as smooth as you could, but... Oh, there's that torque steer dragging us just wide. But as we come out onto the straight... Uh, yeah, I can't recommend this highly enough. I just I'm blown away, especially by the inside, the VR implementation, like that, because that's a big f f um, part of these videos that I wanted to uh, include and have be as be as part of my my formats of that is the VR implementation, 
and I cannot stress enough how much it actually feels like being inside the car. Like, it's really crazy. Oh god, I'm not gonna make the turn, am I? Oh, yes I will. Good brakes. <laughs> so as we pull back into the pits, I will just leave it there. And basically say, if you enjoyed it, please do leave, please do leave a thumbs up, rather. Subscribe if you're new here, thanks for watching. And goodbye. I missed the actual pit spot, but that's okay. <laughs> also, right as I took the headset off, it occurred to me that some people might be interested about the time, just in case. Uh, I wouldn't even bother with this one or with this time around because I literally just I, I stopped that time to change a setting or something like that, or to load up the gear, the gear icon and stuff. So that it literally would have been like not in any way represent representative of what I or the car could do on that track. So yeah, maybe for the next one.